Hey guys, so today we're going to look at a very beginner look at Houdini and looking at the interface, how to navigate everything for the absolute beginner into Houdini. So looking at the top here, we have a fi uh, menu set up right here and we can look at a lot of different things that we have here, um, different settings and preferences and stuff like that. Uh, one of the first things when you're working inside of Houdini is that you're going to want to set up a project whenever you're working on anything. So this will give you a hierarchy of um, folders that you can save into and you can let's say this is our intro project. And then it's going to set it to home, which is inside of the um, my name documents. And then it's going to go into Houdini projects, intro project. And it's going to create all these subfolders for us. So I'm just going to click accept. And now that we have done that, we have the file structure set up, but we haven't saved the actual file itself. So I'm going to click save and you can see here that it already took us automatically into the intro project, which is what we want it to do. So I'm going to call this intro and accept. So now we have our file structure the way we want it so that we can work inside of Houdini. Uh, if you look at this tab on the side, it's kind of nice. You can collapse things that you're not using that often and um, collapse it so that way you kind of get more real estate on your screen so you can actually go through and collapse pretty much anything that you have access to here inside of Houdini. It gives us a lot more space which is nice. Uh, okay so underneath the menus here we have our shelves. The shelves have a lot of quick access tools that we can get to. Um, I use these sometimes. I find that I don't use them as much as I used to when I was starting off, but it's a nice way to get a lot of things that are kind of pre-built and they are just really quick access tools that you can get access to, but um, I do use them, just not as much as I used to, I guess. Um, Looking on this side here, this is just kind of an expansion on the shelf. So there are more shelves that we have here, but you'll see that there's kind of this little divider. This divider, you can actually slide back and forth. So if you want more room on one side or another, you can do that. Um, because if you go too far this way, you'll see that we're kind of cropping off some things. And if we want to access to it, we have to push the arrow so that we can see everything that we have available to us there. So if I expand it, then I ha I can see everything here, but I can't see everything on this side. So I would have to click the arrow to go back and forth. So it's just kind of giving us access to being able to see more things if we needed to. Uh, down here is our kind of more main working area. And in this working area, it's um, our viewport right now that we're seeing or our scene view. Uh, we can switch this out to be basically anything. Um, right now we have some tabs that are set up here. So we have the scene view, the animation editor, uh, rendering view, composite view, motion effects, and geometry spreadsheet. So if we go through here, you can see that they all look very different and they have their own task for what they're doing. But for the most part, what you're going to have open here is the um, scene view. Uh, and it, it's just not limited to these things. If we click on the plus and we look at new paint tab type, we can actually create pretty much anything. So if we want to, we can, um, let's see, a Python shell, for example, if we're typing Python or something like that, um, we can access it that way. So it is really flexible. Um, we can even take a tab that we're using over here and switch it over into this window. So you can actually grab tabs and move them from one section to another depending on what you are doing at the moment. So sometimes it's more useful for you to have something on one side than another and you can completely customize it, which is nice. Um, 
let's see, they have here in build, we have different kind of layouts that we can look. So if we go to animation, we can see that it lays it out different than build, which is the default setup. And it has a whole bunch of different kind of layouts that you can create. Um, if you wanted to, you can always go back to build, that's the default one, and you can save um, current desktop as, so if you change anything and you want to save out a special type of desktop that you like to go back to a lot, you can do that here and then it'll give you a tab to be able to load it and then you can um, load that particular thing, or if you kind of change things around. I can go back to build and just reload current, um, what is it, reload current desktop and it will switch it back to what the default it was. So if by accident you did something that you just didn't know what happened, um, what you did that you messed something up so you ended up something like that you can go back in and reload current desktop and it will get you back to the default. So um, you're never too far off if you think you've messed up something with the way your layout is. Uh, so again, like I said, most of the time what you're going to have here is your viewport. So with the viewport, you want to be able to navigate in your viewport, obviously. So inside of Houdini, if you want to orbit around the world, it is hold down the space bar and then click and drag and that will rot or orbit your camera around in the viewport. This um, is done with the space bar. So holding down the space bar, click and drag and the click is a left mouse button click. Then we can do the spacebar and middle mouse button click. And when we drag with that, we can pan our scene at the current orientation that we have. And then we can do spacebar right mouse button drag. And that's going to allow you to zoom in and out. So that's pretty useful. That allows us to navigate inside of our view. Uh, another thing that we can do in our viewport here is if we look at our perspective setting, we can change our perspective viewport to be an orthographic view here if we wanted to. So if we wanted to look at it straight from the top, we can do that. We can go back to the perspective view and uh, up here on this top view section right here, we have single view, four view, um, to stack a whole bunch of different options. So if you want to be able to see it in a different layout, you can switch out that way. It also has a shortcut where you're doing control one, control two, control three, and that will switch out your views for you. Also, if you push one, two, three, four, you have some presets of um, different camera orthographics or perspective views that you want to get into. So uh, that is pretty useful. And then uh, th up here right now, by default, we have our parameters open. So again, we have a whole bunch of stuff that we can look at, but by default, the parameter is visible here and that's what most people start off working with there. And then down here is our scene view. This is basically where we modify and uh, work with all of our nodes inside of Houdini. So let's create something really quick. Uh, if I click in here and I push tab, it brings up our tab menu. The tab menu basically gives us a list of things that we can go ahead and create. Uh, the other thing, you can go through all these menus and everything, but typically what I do is just push tab and then start typing. So I know what I'm looking for is a geometry node. The geometry node is a placeholder node that will give us a piece of geometry. By default, it's this kind of cube shape. It's not really a cube, but it is um, just a placeholder object that we can go in and swap out with something else. 
So that gives us this node here that we can um, work with. The um, geometry node here, let's look at this node. If you look at this eye right here, it's your node information. So if there's any information, you can go there and um, look at it. And right now, this is just kind of basic geometry. There's no information in there, so that all it is is doing um, telling us that it, there's node info there. Um, selectable, so this can be selectable. So if we go into the viewport and we want to select it, we can select it. And here we have the display flag. So if we turn that off by clicking on this, we can make the display not visible inside of the scene view. And that's all the basic stuff that we have with this geometry node here. Um, we have uh, inputs and outputs. So right now we don't have anything else in the scene. Um, but let's say we had, let's go in and create another geometry node. We can connect them together. And this is basically creating a parent link. Um, we'll look at more of that later. Um, right now we don't see two objects. We only see one because they're right on top of each other. So um, inside of Houdini 16, we have a shortcut that we can use, which is Y. Y brings up our um, wire cutters, which basically if we click and drag, it draws a line and it cuts the connection between nodes. It's pretty awesome new tool starting out in Houdini 16 that we have access to now. So now they're not parented. And let's look at moving one of the pieces of geometry that we have here. So on the left-hand side of your scene view here, you have some manipulator tools. Um, this tool here is the move tool. If you hover over it, you see that it has a T next to it. So that means that that is the shortcut. So if I push T on the keyboard, it will go to that tool. If I look over here, um, S for select, it has a shortcut key of S, R for rotate, and E for scale. And then this is the gizmo tool, which is a show handle tool here. And it is kind of a combination of all of those tools. But if you have another tool selected, it might be something different. Um, but in this case right here, it's just giving us the ability to move things and do all three at the same time. So I'm going to go to the translate tool or the move tool. And here in the viewport, I can click on the arrow and move it. So now we can see that we actually have the two different objects. And I selected it here in the viewport so that I can have access to it. And I can switch back and forth and select them that way. Or I can click in the viewport and select it that way. Um, and s with this move tool, if I look at it, I have arrows. So when I pull and move on the arrows, it lets me move in just a single axis at a time. We also have these little squares. So when I hover over it, you can see that it shows an X, Y. And what that means for us is that I can move in the two axes here that is flat on the XY plane. Over here, if I hover it, you could see the YZ. And then we have this one, which is the XZ. So it gives us quite a bit of different options to be able to move through all those actions. Um, as you saw me kind of going back, I was just doing Control Z, which is an edit um, undo. Control Z just to get back to where I was. So that is the move tool. Also see when I have these objects selected or if I select on these nodes here, you can see in the top section here I have the parameters because we are in the parameter. If I click off of everything, um, Uh, it's going to leave that last selection because I already accessed it. But um, basically, we're switching back and forth and we have parameters. So we can type in 
a specific value in here if we didn't want to kind of leave it to eyeballing and we needed something very accurate we can type in values here we can even do expressions and things like that we won't go over that in this lesson but just know that you can connect things here other than just a direct numerical value you can actually write an expression and um, have procedural animation or positioning happening through an expression Okay, so um, yeah, that was the move tool. Let's go over to the rotate tool. I can click the button here or I can click R on the keyboard. That gives me access to be able to rotate. Again, you can click on the individual axis lines so you can rotate on a specific axis one at a time. This one on the outside here lets me rotate based off of the current view of the viewport. So it will have different effect depending on how I'm looking at this geometry. And then if I click on the center in the kind of gray area of the sphere, I can actually tumble in all three axes, which is kind of an interesting way to be able to move it. If I want to um, get it back to the origin, I can kind of try to eyeball it and get it pretty close to be as flat as possible or I can go back in here and type zero zero oops, zero and zero and it will reset my orientation so that is the rotate tool and then we have the scale tool here with the scale tool we can scale in a single axis at a time so I'm clicking on that little line in here and whatever axis I want to do so that will give you the single axis you have this sh shape right here and we can scale on two axes at a time so that was what was this one the XY this one is the YZ and then we have the XZ. So we can do two at a time and then um, let's see if we click on the triangles I believe it's out here on the outside part we can do it uniformly yeah so that lets you scale your objects uniformly. Um, let's see what else do we have here that would be good to know well let's look at the show handle tool here it's pretty interesting because we can rotate anything we want we can also uh, let me get in an angle okay here we can move anything we want and then we have these here we can move in different axes and things like that so um, it kind of gives us access to more tools than just kind of the basic ones, but um, it is, it can change depending on what tool you actually have access to at the time, what you have access to work with. So be careful with that. Uh, let's look at maybe creating uh, some other pieces just in, other than these placeholder pieces of geometry let's say we wanted to change our geo one here and we wanted to um, create a different piece of geometry maybe a sphere or something like that so what I'm going to do is take this file node because it's looking to import something and we can see that right now we have a default um, geo and actually um, I don't think if I said exactly how to get into here, so um, if I did, just sorry if I'm repeating myself, but um, in the object mode here, I'm just going to double click on the geo that gets us into the um, node editor for our object there. Um, this is what they call SOPs, and we're at the SOP level of this object. Um, so here basically we're loading this default b or dot bgo file which is this file right here um, in this case i don't want that i want to have a sphere so i'm going to select it and push delete on the keyboard that gets rid of that shape for me then i am going to push tab here and i'm going to type in sphere 
And you can see as I type in, I have access to the sphere right here. And I can create it there. And it creates a sphere for me. Um, with the sphere, we have different kind of modes and things that we can create the sphere in. If we want polygons, polygon mesh, and different options and stuff like that. But um, that's going further than I want in this particular video. Um, I just want to show you that you can create objects in here. We can add um, a whole bunch of stuff to manipulate this object to make it look like whatever we want. But just know that this is the main area where we will work and um, do things with this object. So I'm going to go back to the object level by clicking on object here. So it's kind of like a hierarchy. We went into that object and now we're jumping back out to our scene level. So I have Geometry Tool 2 here. I'm going to double click on that and I have this file node again. So I am going to delete it and push tab and let's say this time I want a torus just so we have something different. I can click that torus and put it in there and you can see that I've with the sphere when I created it, and I created it by default, placed it in the center, and this time when I created the torus, it created it off to the side, and that's because I moved it at the object level. So we can see that it is three units, let's make it something even, four units here. Um, so when I go into the torus, it's taking that information and feeding it into here. Um, so that's something else to keep in mind that the um, tool, here is kind of separate. We can see that the center here for the object inside of the slot level is at 0, 0, 0. Whereas in the object level for geometry 2, let's call this um, uh, T Taurus Geo. So we can actually rename things by clicking on it and renaming it here. Sphere Geo, so we can kind of be able to access and name it and know what we're working with a little bit easier. So going inside of this torus, it's zero zero zero, but out here we are at four zero zero. Um, so um, that's where we're setting the world for everything that is in this object. So let's say we wanted to manipulate this and we took it and added a transform node. So the transform node is kind of in the soft level how you can go in and manipulate it. So right now I changed the eyeball or the display flag from here because if we're looking at this, that's the furthest down the chain that we can see it, um, to the transform node here. So with the transform node, with the eyeball now, I can actually go in and uh, move this. And let's say I moved it negative four units. So it shows like it's at the center, but it basically what we're doing is kind of counterbalancing what we did here. So we're not really changing this value at all. We're actually just moving it from whatever it considers its world. So in this case, when we look at it at this level here, we are seeing it at um, the origin of its world, which is at zero over here. So if I push Y and I cut this connection here, uh, the center should be at, sorry, I actually manipulated it here. I wanted to manipulate it here on the transform. So I can do negative four. So if I push the display flag here, you can see that um, here, the sphere is here, and we're viewing it at this level. As soon as we jump down to the next level, the sphere has moved over to that section. So it doesn't really lose the history of that the origin is here. It really gets manipulated at this point and shifts it over. Um, I can move it up, and it keeps that history only based off of what is here. So if I were to click on it, we can see kind of the wireframe of where it is, but the main active thing is whatever it has to display, which is there. 
Um, and again, if I push Y, I can cut it and it doesn't have a connection. So I have this transform information that is there, but it doesn't have any information feeding into it. In order for it to work, we have to draw this connection by clicking on the outputs of this to go into the inputs of the transform node. So when we have something like this in our scene, it doesn't necessarily have to be individual objects. So I'm going to go back to the object mode right here. And I am going to select all of the nodes that we had there and delete them. And let's say um, I wanted to create a sphere. I'm going to push Alt and where is it? Control. There we go control and click on the sphere and when I do that it creates it there in the origin you can see that it created this geometry node for us this is geometry here but it's um, created it as a sphere object and it already has that sphere connected so this is kind of like a shortcut way to create those um, few steps that we just did to create a sphere so let's say I move that up here I can actually take this and let's say um, actually, I'm going to, yeah, I want it there. So I'm going to select this and copy and paste. So control C, control V, and I created another sphere. This sphere, I want to move it up and you can see that I don't see that other sphere because they're not connected. But if I go over here, I have the other sphere that is actually there. So I have two spheres inside of this geometry node that we created. If we want to be able to see them together, we can actually do a um, merge node. And with this merge node, you can see that this um, input node is a different shape. So that means that we can actually input a lot more than just um, two things. If we wanted to, we can keep on inputting more and more things to go into this merge node. So if I click the display flag here, you can see that now we see both of these objects. And let's say I wanted to manipulate this. I can go here and um, adjust it so maybe I can take in the radius maybe and adjust it and here what I'm doing is clicking on the radius middle mouse button clicking on it and it gives us these increments by so I can say I want to go by 0.1 increments and then drag and you can see that all the X Y and Z are all changing at the same time to be able to change that then um, I can move down and this is 0 0.01 so I can go at a smaller increment level or 0 0.001 you can see that it moves much slower so we can also go in the opposite direction so we can go we want to do it by once so it scales and goes down pretty big or pretty fast so let's say I want to kind of move it something like that and I move the center to kind of be a little bit like that. And then I can, another way that you can actually do this, which is pretty interesting is, so here we've created two pieces of geometry and we merged it down into this bottom section where is the merge. What we can do is create something like a transform node uh, let me put it over here where you can see it. So I'm pushing tab, push transform. T R N. There we go. So with the transform node, I can connect the inputs of this sphere into the transform and then click it into the merge. So now we have this sphere kind of coming in twice, one directly and one through the transform. So if I push the eye socket here on this transform, we can see that there is a value that's changed. And I'm going to go here and select it on the merge. So uh, even though I have the display flag, I can actually select a piece of geom or a, a specific node and change the properties here. So I'm changing something up higher, but I want to see the result down here. 
So I can now take that and move it up and maybe scale it down a bit. And let's move this back up again. So here we can see that we have three different spheres that we kind of stacked on top of each other. But with the spheres, um, basically what we're doing is um, adding them all into one piece of geometry. And also we're doing it in different ways. We can make a direct connection. We can make a direct connection here again, but with that same direct connection, we can do a transform and create multiple things here. So if we wanted to, really what we could do is take that and connect it to the original sphere and we have a transform. So since the geometry is kind of uh, more intense, more processing that's happening, and then we are just manipulating that one piece of geometry, what we can do is copy and paste this transform again. And on this one, maybe put it up higher and scale it down again. and then merge this one down and together with the other ones. And you can see now we only have one piece of geometry, but we are affecting, or in the end, we end up having three of them through the way that we've done this procedurally. So I hope that makes sense. Um, we can, uh, since this kind of looks like a snowman, let's go in and we can do something like a uh, maybe uh, let's look at what we have here as options. If we go into the polygons, and push tab, go to polygons or primitives actually is what I want to see. We can see different objects that we have access to. Um, some of it is actually going off the um, screen here because there's more things that we can get down on the bottom. Um, so let's, we can make this big here, uh, maximize plane, pain. So it is, let's try this, Alt B, that didn't work, let's do Control B. There we go. Mm -hmm. So with the Control B, we can actually um, make any one of these windows actually full screen. So in this one, I'm taking this pane here and making it full screen. And let's push tab here so that I have a little bit more room. I can look at primitives. You can see that there's even more stuff that is popping out here. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's just because I increased the resolution to be able to, or decrease the resolution so that I can have things be a little bit bigger for you guys um, so that you can see it a little bit easier. Usually by default, all these things are a bit smaller um, and these menu items and things like that are smaller. So right now it's kind of going off to the end there. Um, I don't know, let's, oops, I probably created that there, okay. So I'm gonna go back into the sphere here and um, maybe create a tube. So a tube is kind of like a cylindrical shape that we can work with and we can actually take that and merge it into there. And you can see that it looks kind of um, hollow So let's go back there. Okay, so the tube looks hollow. Um, if we look at the options here, we can click on this checkbox and that will give us end caps, which is pretty nice. Uh, we can adjust the radius. So I'm going to take that radius down and kind of take this radius down. Can adjust the height also. So I'm gonna bring that maybe more down and I'm gonna adjust the center to kind of come up. Um, maybe move this a little bit. Actually, I don't want it, move it that way. I wanna move it towards the front. 
and I don't have any real um, orientation set up here other than creating it on a different axis. So I can create it on the x-axis and say that that's the way I want that point to come out. So here I'm going to make this smaller and this one smaller as well. So I can kind of kind of make a carrot shape. It's very primitive at this point, but it kind of will give you an idea of what you can do with some primitives there in place. Oops. So now we have kind of a little um, carrot coming out from the spheres there to kind of give it a direction and whatnot. But that's the general idea. If we go back into the object mode here and I select this, this is the main geometry. Let's recall, rename this to something like uh, snowman. And now that we've done that, we can move it all as one whole object here. So I can move it, I can um, scale it if I want, I can um, rotate. So it gives us a whole object that is a snowman, but it's made out of multiple little pieces here. And again, there's much more to kind of go over it and work with this to kind of make it more detailed and make it look uh, like a higher quality model but uh, this is just a basic overview of how to use Houdini in a very basic look and also um, going into the nodes creating nodes to be able to um, create something that you can see inside of there. Um, again, we can make it things dynamic. We can um, add particles to make it snow in here and things like that. But that's out of the scope of this video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it, learned something, and um, check back on Filmmaker Perez here, and I'll upload more tutorials as time goes by. I hope you guys found this useful. We'll see you guys in the next lesson. Bye.